Hi guys, it's Jimmy McIntyre here with another post-processing tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at how to easily blend multiple exposures in Photoshop to create dynamic light trails. And then we'll look at how to make those light trails even more impacting. <laughs> To begin, this is the final image I took in process of a street in Hong Kong. We're going to look at how to create these long sweeping light trails. This particular image is composed of 11 exposures, 6 for the light trails, 3 to recover the highlights slightly, and 1 to recover the shadows using luminosity masks. You can see a link to my luminosity mask tutorial in the description of this video. Now let's look at some of the original files. This is our base exposure. It was a 5 second exposure, that's why the light trails break off in certain places. You can see the EXIF info on the screen now. I chose this exposure time for two reasons. Firstly, it was raining, so the shorter the shutter speed, the less likely I'd get raindrops on my lens. And secondly, I hope to capture some of the texture in the clouds above. With longer exposures, the clouds would move more and the texture would become a lot smoother and less defined. For the car trails, I captured six more exposures. However, this time I opened up my aperture to f22 so that I could extend my exposure time to 25 seconds. This would give me longer sweeping light trails as you see here on all six exposures. The other benefit is that we are also left with these very cool flares or spikes on the street lamps. So our goal is to blend the light trails in these six exposures into our base exposure. We're going to do this with the blend mode lighten. I've taught this blend mode a few times and it is undoubtedly one of the most useful tools in Photoshop. It'll compare the pixels of two layers and only keep the brightest pixels. So in theory, we can combine all of these exposures very quickly. Let me show you what I mean. Firstly, I'm going to select the top layer. Then I'll go down to layer one, hold shift and left click on it, selecting all of the layers. Now I go to blend mode and choose lighten. This will change the blend mode of all of the selected layers. You can see now that the roads have many more light trails on them. I'll group these layers by holding Ctrl and G or Command and G on a Mac. Now we can toggle the before and after. This one simple change has made a huge difference. And we've also now gained these very cool spikes on the street lamps. However, although we only really want to affect the light trails and street lights, we've made some subtle changes across the entire image that we don't necessarily want to keep. For example, if we zoom into the main building, we'll see a smudge from a raindrop. Toggling the before and after, we can see that it isn't on the base exposure, so it's on one of the light trail exposures. Let's mask most of the light trail exposures out so these layers only affect certain areas. Rather than masking each individual layer, we can create a mask on the group, like this, and select a black paintbrush, and begin to mask out these exposures. Ok, now let's look at the final image again. We can see that the light trails in the foreground here are much stronger. That's because I duplicated my light trail exposures to intensify the effect. Going back to our images, I'm going to select the quick selection tool with a feather of 20 and I'm going to draw around the light trails on the top layer. Then I right click on the active selection and choose layer via copy. Then I select the move tool and move it along a small amount, doubling its effect. You can see the yellow lines have doubled which isn't ideal, so let's choose a small black brush, create a mask and paint those lines out. I'll duplicate this layer and slide it along again. Now I'll duplicate it a third time and move it even further along to the right. You can see it doesn't look like it fits in this space, so I'll press Ctrl and D or Command and D on a Mac to make sure I have no active selections and then I'll go to Edit, Transform, Distort. 
Now I'll just manipulate this layer until it looks better. If there are any edges or parts that don't look right, we can create a mask and mask them out. Now let's group these three layers and look at it before and after. That's a huge difference. If we really want to go crazy, we can duplicate this group and with the move tool selected once more, we can move this duplicated group along slightly, strengthening the effect even further. If it's too strong in places, we can create a mask, set a lower opacity and mask out those areas. Now we need to give our light trails more energy by brightening them up. We can do this very easily by opening a levels adjustment layer and sliding the white point or the highlights to the left. We only want to apply this to our light trails, so with the levels layer mask selected, press Ctrl and I or Command and I on a Mac to invert the mask, which will make this layer invisible. With a white paintbrush at 100% opacity, we're going to gently paint in this levels adjustment. In some places it's far too strong, it's become heavily overexposed, like under the bridge here. Setting our paintbrush to black and choosing 50% opacity, we can paint that out. Now we can see that the levels has added a lot more vibrancy to our light trails, but since this is a contrast adjustment, it's also increased the saturation of some of the colors in these areas, especially the yellows. So let's change the blend mode of this layer to luminosity which will allow us to keep the contrast adjustment without affecting our colors. And that's it. If we look at it before and after, we can see a huge difference with only a few steps that we've done in Photoshop. If you found this tutorial useful, please feel free to share it with a photographer friend who you think might also like it. And feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you around.